Hey there, my name's Jim Stein and I'm the LA Fish Guy. Welcome back to the new, shorter, multi-part version of LA Fish Guys. Are you ready to get wet? I've had the luxury since 1999 of using real ocean water and at least eight years prior to that at the tropical fish store that I worked at. The big advantages of real ocean water are simply the convenience. You don't have to make it. Uh, the second advantage is it's you can't get any better than the real thing. Unfortunately, there are some questions that do come up lately. One is the quality of that water and the second <clears throat> is the cost of that water. Keep in mind, somebody's filtering it and somebody's going to be delivering it. The quality aspect, I'm referring more to not so much, uh, certainly not ammonias or nitrites, um, maybe the tiniest little bit of nitrate, but it's really more uh, nutrients such as phosphates. Unfortunately, with the big cutback in a number of aquarium service customers, I now need to start looking into um, Less, lesser costly means of providing that salt water. I also want to look into providing a better quality water. So along with our friends over at SpectraPure, we're going to be installing an RODI water purification system today and modifying the two containers behind me so that we can manufacture our own salt water and again dispense it from here and take it directly out to our customers. So with my other friend Scott we're going to clean these containers and we're then going to modify them so that we can hook up a circulation system. Uh, we're then going to install uh, the water purification system at that end of the garage. We'll run it over into these containers. We're going to set up a few little float switches to help minimize the potential <laughs> of me uh, overflowing the containers, which is, to be honest with you, one of my uh, concerns is I don't have enough patience to stand here and wait for those containers to fill up. So I'm either going to have to develop a means to make sure that that doesn't happen or develop some patience. So let's get to work. How are you guys doing? Uh, so we're going to be installing a uh, RODI system um, and we're also going to be installing a, a transfer system and mixing system for his RODI tank and for a saltwater tank. And the first thing to do is going to be, obviously, once we get these things out and rinsed, we're going to have to drill some holes. Um, the RODI is going to be managed by a few float switches. Uh, first and foremost, we'll have a high-level float switch. The high-level float switch over here will turn the RODI off. The low-level float switch will turn it on. Now, the unit that we're using has an automatic flush, and to preserve the length and longevity of the DI cartridges, ideally, you want to have a have your um, system flush every 30 or so gallons. So we're going to set the low level float switch up at 30 gallons uh, so that when the RODI container gets 30 gallons low it will automatically turn on and start making RO water. We'll use a mechanical float switch as a fail safe. So essentially that will get mounted in here and should one of these switches fail, which based on my experience they never fail, but God forbid one fail, this will act as a fail safe and will shut the water flow off regardless of the status of these switches. So that's for the RODI system. So to do the transferring and mixing, we've got an Iwaki pump here. The Iwaki pump will handle transferring water from our DI to our salt water. It'll also handle mixing the salt water. In addition, it will also handle sending water out to his van if he needs to send there or bring water out to a customer's house, a uh, large amount that is. And it'll also handle adding water to his quarantine system behind. In order to transfer water, what we do is we open a valve here at the, DI, at the DI tank and we close the valve here from the salt water tank. And then at that point the pump will draw from the DI and transfer water directly over to a salt water holding tank where if he's not paying attention inevitably he'll overflow it. For mixing, the DI valve is closed which would be the normal operation and the salt water valve is open. That way water is continually being pulled from the salt water tank and return back into the salt water tank 
creating a constant circular flow that will keep the water oxygenated. It will also keep the salt water mixed well. And what we'll do is we'll have this pump on a timer so that several times a day it will turn on for 15 to 30 minutes to ensure that his salt water is continually mixed and continually fresh. It doesn't stagnate that way. With the eye, he'll be using enough of this so we don't really need to worry about mixing it. It won't stagnate because all the, all the uh, stuff that would normally be in our tap water has been removed. The water is more or less sterile at that point. So, you know, it won't develop algae blooms the same way a saltwater tank would. So in its nutshell, first project is going to be to set up his mixing tanks and then we'll move on to setting up the RO. Are you still tumbling bio pellets? Tired of constantly replacing your GFO? Or trying to grow algae in your refugium? And you still have algae problems? Get real! Real filtration, that is. Algae scrubbers from Santa Monica Filtration will turn this into this by growing this weekly. Two styles of scrubbers, the hog and the surf. Both are extremely easily installed and noticeably effective. You want results? Algae scrubbers are the answer. Visit santa-monica.cc Next time you're near Long Beach, California, take the time to stop in at Age of Aquariums, 2642 Cherry Avenue, just off the 405 freeway near Signal Hill. Age of Aquariums carries a full line of dry goods, supplements, and exotic equipment. Age of Aquariums also carries a wide assortment of living corals, coral frags, as well as fresh and saltwater fish ranging from the usual, the unusual, and the bizarre. Age of Aquariums is located at 2642 Cherry Avenue, Long Beach, California, near Signal Hill. Open seven days a week. Call 562- 438-6252 or visit ageofaquariums.biz So part of the whole process is to produce as pure or clean a salt water as I can. Um, these containers I've bleached overnight and tried to scrubbing them, but there's still some sediment in the bottom and there's still a few hard algae spots on the inside. So we've decided to just pull them off. We can carry them over there onto the lawn or I can kind of climb inside and brush them out and then rinse them out. These polyethylene containers each hold 300 gallons of water and are durable and lightweight. Over their 20 years plus of use, they've built up some calcium and algae deposits inside. Work smart and work easy, or easier. It's been suggested that a light muriatic acid soaking would be the best solution. But to be honest, I'm a little uncomfortable with such a strong cleaning agent and I did not allow adequate time to thoroughly rinse out such a strong chemical. Instead, I've opted to soak each container in a strong bleach solution and then allowed to rinse for an additional 24 hours with fresh water. I now need to work harder on the areas that the bleach had little effect. When I was transferring the water this morning, I was standing there watching it. And I remember one time with the real ocean water, I had uh, tuna cakes growing in the bottom of the container. Tuna cakes are like those little bases uh, with double siphon tubes. Part of what comes with real ocean water. That was, other than some calcareous tube worms, those are the only life things that I'm aware that ever came along with the real ocean water. This is where the hard work comes into play as I need to climb inside and scrub the interior of the container. 
So for our Spectre Pure RODI, as I said before, we've got two float valves or float switches and a float valve. We have the high and low level float switches over here and the float valve. First thing to do is we're going to set up our float valve, which will be a high point, um, fail safe, and we'll drill a hole for our float switch. So a fancy little step bit here, kind of marked off a spot to drill at that you know won't interfere with his wall. I'm put these up as high as possible. valve. Since the float switch is going to act as, you well, know, can act as a fail safe or a, uh, or the main, we can just put it right around the same level here. Alright. Next, we're going to need a tape measure because we're going to set the second float switch down about 30 gallons. We're going to mark off a 30 gallon point here, which is going to be roughly four and a half inches. So now we're going to drill the hole for the low level flow switch. This is a flow switch that will turn the RODI on automatically. Next thing to do is to install our float switches and float valve. So you'll notice with these Spectre Pier float switches, they are labeled high and low, and that's because they plug into a little electronic controller that will activate the solenoid based on high level or low level. When it hits the low level, the solenoid opens. When it hits the when it hits the uh, high level switch, the solenoid closes. And as Scott positions the float switches in the first container. I'll continue to work on scrubbing and rinsing out the second container. <sighs> These containers are a good 20, 25 years old, and they've dispensed a whole lot of salt water over time, so they've held up quite well. Um, looks like I'm going to have to use a little more strength to get in there and clean them, and I'm going to use what Scott referred to as my uh, redneck high-pressure washer. Unfortunately, without a good acid wash and or some vinegar, it's going to be hard to get some of that calcareous stuff that's built up over the years out, but at the end of the day it's really not going to make that much of a difference. And at some point in the very near future we're going to get some black wrap and have Jim wrap these tanks so they don't get any light and that will inhibit any further algae growth in there. <laughs> waiting for me to go inside there and you're gonna hose me down with that thing, eh? Now for some manual labor. <laughs> Meet my friend Manuel. Make it a point to come on back for the second part as we install the SpectraPure RODI water purification system.